Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's Popeye from FederalJack.com and Down the Rabbit Hole. Just wanted to talk to you all really quick about something uh, that I actually don't normally talk about quite often, which is pet care. Something a little bit different than politics, conspiracy, or anything that I normally talk about, but just as important. And I wanted to show you an article that might get your attention if you're a cat owner or considering being a cat owner in the future. Now, I myself am against declawing. Back when I was younger, I was for it because that's what they did to cats when I was a kid. And I thought that you know, when, when you're raised around, you know, you're young and you're raised around animals and stuff and you don't see the vet harming them, you think that's the, the proper thing to do. But as I got older and I started to research more outside-the-box thinking, I put my brain to that same line of thinking when it came to my animal's health. And I quickly found out, with a little bit of help from the internet, that declawing a cat is very bad. And this was a very long time ago. And I have since adopted uh, two cats you know, since this period of time that I found out that declawing cats was bad. And over the the two year over the course over the two years over the course of years, um, I have adopted two more cats, and I will not declaw either one of them. It's barbaric. It's horrific what is actually done to the animal. If you understand, and I'll, I'll show you in the little diagram here, but if you look at your finger while I'm doing this, just quickly look away from the screen and while you're watching this on YouTube. Look down at your hand that you're holding the mouse with, right, left hand, whatever. You like to use your index finger. You like to press your index finger on that mouse button, right? Click, 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 click. Oh, look, I can right click. Oh, I can drag my mouse. Oh, look, yeah. Ooh, ooh, my fingertip. It's so great. Okay, now... Take a pair of tin snips and snip your finger off at the first knuckle, the tip of your finger. So the first bend, that's the first knuckle joint, take a pair of tin snips and remove that fingertip and now go use your mouse. In fact, remove all of your fingertips like that at that first knuckle on both hands and go tell me if you think you could operate normally, if you can function normally. If you think when it heals that it'll be pain free and there won't be any scar tissue or tendon damage or nerve damage or anything else, go ahead and tell me that. And if you actually believe that, then go ahead and actually take a pair of tin snips and chop off all of your fingertips to the first knuckle and tell me how that works out for you. I'll tell you right now before you even do it. Well, don't really do it because that would be bad. But I'll tell you right now, it would end up very horribly for you. And I think we all realize this, right? I, you obviously sense the sarcasm in my voice. So, physical consequences of declawing. Well, right here, okay, in this picture, you have an example. Here's the normal toe with the claw retracted. And then when they extend their toe with the claw extended out, you can see how everything bends and moves here. Well, this is the piece that they actually remove, this piece right here. Okay, so... P1 and P2 are still there, but this and the claw are gone. This little, this bone right here that attaches here, like to the joint, and the claw itself are gone. You can see in this instance, both of them have it removed. Now what happens is, because instead of having this angle where when they're walking or when their claws are out, they have better weight bearing, you can see weight bearing goes directly 90 degrees onto the joint, so this probably causes joint damage here and inflammation and arthritis. And then over the course of time, the way the tendons are and because of the way they heal and because the cat doesn't get physical therapy, like a human would if you had a, an appendage removed or something so that you'd be able to move the rest of the finger still because that's what PT is about. Trust me, I've had a lot of operations, I know. PT is about moving scar tissue and getting tendons and stuff and nerves to move and start to fire back. That's what it's about. That's why it's painful. Well, look, this can't be good. I mean, look, this is this is how it normally sits if he's walking, he or she, the, the cat is walking, okay? Even if it's got its claws retracted, you can see it's on an angle. This is direct 90 degree weight bearing, so that puts un, unneeded, un, uh, unused to, I guess you could say, pressure on that joint. That joint's not used to that angle. It's supposed to function like this. You can see it's molded to function like this. It's not molded, if you look at the way the joint is, to function like this. So this is improper 
mount, uh, mechanical function, and this is proper mechanical function. And then over the course of time, with the way the tendons get all tight and everything, the that piece of toe starts to curl inwards. And it causes a lot of problems. You, you can read in the article. This is uh, the website's Little Big Cat. And obviously, DVM is a doctor of veterinary medicine. So, physical consequences of declawing. So here you have a a doctor telling you, a, a veterinarian telling you, look, declawing is bad for you. And I'm glad there's professionals talking about this. And if if you look at the pictures, you can see here's x-rays of a normal cat with normal paw. You can see how it's got that extra piece of toe here. So... You have that bone, and then it comes up, and then it goes on an angle. You see here? Here's a normal cat paw where it looks perfectly little rounded with, his little, with the little claws inside. Here's one that's been declawed. You can see, if you look at the tips, you can see it's more of a hardcore angle upward. They, they just look a little bit more decrepit. And then if you look at the x-ray, you can see where the bend would be here, because this is where the claw is, and the paw. Now look. It's just, it's gone. So it's, it's direct weight bearing on the joint. This was made by nature, okay, by God, by the great mystery, whatever you believe in, science or, or, or creationism, doesn't matter. You look at this with a logical mind, whatever force created us created this naturally to bear weight. We are removing it because humanity thinks we know better. It's actually just because we don't want our stuff messed up. So because we don't want our, our stuff messed up and we don't want to take the time to, to clip the cat's claws, no, we'll just get them to claw it in the front or in the back too. So you're, again, taking a pair of tin snips to your own fingers and chop off your fingertips. Take your finger right down to the first knuckle, that first little bendy joint in your finger, and just chop that thing right off. That's what you're doing to the cat. It's really horrific. I mean, look at this. Look, look at the, how decrepit the cat's paws look. Look. I mean, anybody that knows orthopedic surgery for humans could look at this and say, oh my God, I can only imagine what that poor cat is going through. But look, these are not supposed to be weight-bearing. These are joints that are meant to be attached to another piece that helps bear the weight. And yet now they're direct weight-bearing right here. And then that, put, that makes this joint work at an odd angle, which I'm sure causes arthritis in the cat's paws. Maybe that's why cats that don't have their, their, their claws, and they say, oh, they're, you know, they, you see them trying to sharpen their claws, and people say, oh, they're just doing that out of instinct. They think, they still think they have their claws, and the vet says that. Makes me wonder if perhaps maybe those cats have arthritis, and the only way that it makes them feel better is to stretch it, just like I do when I have to do physical therapy for different surgeries I've had because of scar tissue. And because I have arthritis, and the only way to make the, I mean, the, Sometimes there is just too much inflammation and in exercise or anything doesn't make it go away. But sometimes to, if the, you know, if say you have arthritis in your hands, what would you do? You'd stretch your hands out, right? You'd try to move your hands around a little bit, try to stretch them out. Well, maybe that's what the cat's doing. Instead of, well, it's just instinct. It's think it still has claws. Maybe, maybe. Or maybe it's a way of coping with the pain. We really don't know. But to, to rule it out without trying to logically think about it would be a mistake. Because, you know, we can't say that animals don't have pain and that wouldn't think of a way to deal with the pain, perhaps even similar to the way we would. Oh, that's impossible. Animals aren't capable of thought. I'm not even going to get into that argument. I, I would demolish that argument in a second. Anyway, I don't want to take too long. The point is, if you have cats, if you're thinking about getting cats in the future, do not get them to clawed, ladies and gentlemen. Take the time to learn how to hold the cat and clip its nails. You know what? It's a time-consuming process when you first start doing it. You're going to get cut. You're going to get scratched. You'll learn real fast how to wrap your cat in a towel that you should wear long sleeves and perhaps gloves on your hand. Trust me, I know. I've had gushing wounds where it looked like I got stabbed. That's part of owning a cat with claws. You, you shouldn't just cut the cat's fingertips off because it's inconvenient to you because your party lifestyle or your lifestyle you know, of watching TV or work it's, you're just too busy to learn and yourself and train the cat how to 
trim its nails. Eventually, the cat will get used to you holding it and trimming its nails. And if you do it right, you won't cut the cat's nails or make it bleed. You only have to trim the tips. And after a while, repeated, uh, repeated trimmings and clippings of the nails uh, will help them not grow so thin and razor sharp. Uh, it almost ends up training the nail over a period of time. And they grow in a little thicker. Uh, and they also they start to uh, grow a little shorter. And it takes a little longer for them to grow. It's just, oh, but it takes, anybody that trims their own cat's nails knows what I'm talking about. The point is, it takes time. You have to train the cat to accept being held. Some cats, right off the bat, love being held. But most cats I know don't like being held for too long. So you have to train the cat to get used to you holding it. It takes some time. If you're not willing to put that time into caring for the animal, don't get it. Don't get a pet because it's trendy and cool and you just want an animal to look at when you come home from work. You have to be able to show that animal as much unconditional love as it shows you. Don't do something cruel like deform the cat by getting it declawed because you don't want to take the time to learn or you're afraid of getting cut or I'm too pretty and I don't want scars. Then don't have an animal as a pet because you're not being a responsible parent to that animal. Just like you wouldn't be a responsible parent to a child if because the kid was playing with chocolate and finger paints and everything else and making a mess all over the house you decided to take a pair of tin snips and cut his fingers off at the first knuckle so that way he wouldn't be able to grab things as easily people would call that child abuse yet we do it to our animals and we say it's okay it's not okay it's not okay because it's an animal it's another living creature okay the sooner we start realizing that and understanding that as humans the sooner the world will start to be a better place Part of the reason the world is so messed up is because we've lost our humanity in so many different ways. And this is a way of getting it back, is understanding how to treat other living creatures. Anyway, check out LittleBigCat, LittleBigCat.com. Check out the, this article from February 1st of 2013, Physical Consequences of Declawing. And again, if you really want to put it in short, sweet, understandable terms, look down at your right hand or your left hand, whatever hand you're using the mouse with, and imagine chopping off your finger with a pair of tin snips at the first knuckle. And then try using your mouse, your pencil, try being a mechanic, try working on stuff, try building a computer, try doing anything, try cooking without the use of those fingertips. I mean, eventually you might learn how to do it, but it's going to be painful, you're going to have scar tissue, and it'll never ever be like when you were born. Sometimes, sometimes I think... Our human ego pushes us a little too far to think that we're better than nature. Well, we can just perfect the cat by removing these. No, the cat is fine on its own. Don't be a lazy owner. As I said, check out Little Big Cat. Make sure if you're going to get an animal, you have the time to dedicate to it like you should. Just like you would if you were going to have a human child. A pet is no different. All right, ladies and gentlemen. That's all for now. As I always tell you, the solutions to our problems are an inside job. You can check me out on Twitter at DTRH underscore Popeye and at Federal Jack. So two Twitter accounts at DTRH underscore Popeye and the other account is at Federal Jack. Take it easy. Watch your six. And be your own superhero. I'll catch you on the flip side. I'm out.